We're going to continue with the wall construction today and we're going to be going over the window. What I'm going to try to do is have a window jam that blends in seamlessly with the plywood walls. <music> The wood I picked up for the jams. This is a premium board and this is definitely less than premium. It was just so darn expensive. I didn't want to waste all that money. But it looks like I'm going to have to take at least this board and rip and flip it. If you're not familiar with the term rip and flip, what you do is put some marks on the board so you know the initial orientation you rip it in half and then flip one of the pieces end over end. So what was the face is now down and what was that end is now this end. Then you glue it back together and it'll make it a lot more stable in the long run. Since the last video where I put that plywood up, I went and picked up a bunch of soft maple for the trim in the tiny house, but now it's in the way and I can't use those boards for a bench anymore and I can't use that for a bench so what I'm going to do is clear this whole area out take some of this plywood make a temporary bench well I'm just going to put it on horses get all this stuff back onto the horses and then we'll proceed with the rip and flip on this stuff let me show you this real quick this is the window right here I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch gap there. That's so I can get this pry bar down in there. Well, you never want that to be tight anyways. But I want to be able to get this pry bar down there and push the jam over to the ply. I'll be putting a nail down low because I'm going to round this edge over at some point. But these are the boards we're talking about right now. It's split right down the middle. And the total width on this is going to be, I believe, six and a half. And these one by eights, they should be seven and a quarter, but they're probably going to be a little less than that because they're one by, yeah, seven and an eighth and seven and an eighth strong. So once I rip them down the middle, they'll be seven inches. So I'll have about an inch to play with so when i clamp this stuff up it doesn't matter if i get marred up edges or anything i'll just trim them both sides and we'll be good to go all right let me get that bench set up and all this stuff cleared off and we'll be off to the races all right i have a couple more boards in clamps and i just took this one out of clamps and I thought I'd mention this just in case somebody doesn't know what's going on. When you do a rip and flip like this, you have a solid board, split it in half. Then like the wood that's on the face right next to this knot is now way over here on the underside. That's it right there. So you're basically mixing everything up where you had two top faces now you have a top face and a bottom face and where you used to have the end wood you have the end wood and the end wood from over here that probably didn't make a whole lot of sense but it adds a whole lot of stability and it's not a huge amount of work so let me get this sanded up real quick and then we'll get to making this box. I'm about to cut my, my sill parts to width and I need to double check. I got six and five eighths fairly consistently along the bottom, but I had yeah, like that right there. That is coming to six and a little over six and three eighths, which kind of sucks. A quarter inch difference is a lot. 
Yeah, a little bit less than six and a half there as well. And what I can do when I'm putting the board over this, if I have it right at six and a half, we would have a little gap behind the plywood, but not on the front, but it would be tight up against here. I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but I want like an eighth inch gap between the jam and the window, and it needs to be tight against the back of the plywood. And what I want to do is take this pry bar and gently push the plywood or the the pine board against the back of the plywood which will be right here and then fire some nails into it. it it'll be glued as well but i really need that eighth inch gap but if it's tight up against the window here and the plywood is out here but i don't want the plywood bumped out all right let me take a few more measurements and we'll figure out what to do yeah this this board right here if you go all the way back there look at that gap that's what the problem is. All right. So, if we measure this, we're at six and five eighths plus, and then we'll measure over to here. Uh, We're at six and three quarters. Okay. We're just gonna do six and a half, and when the plywood's on, it's gonna go off of this face, and then there'll just be a little gap right here because these are at an angle. All right, that'll work. One last double check right here. We'll go down, way down there. Yeah, that's six and five eighths. All right, beautiful. Six and a half it is. I've been trying not to bring all of my tools over here because I don't have room and I'm working on the shop here, but it's kind of hard to work without tools. I believe I made five trips getting clamps and I just made several more trips getting other stuff. So I'm a little bit behind I know a lot of you probably don't use wood clamps like these anymore or ever but I find them invaluable. All right, I'm gonna use Tight Bond 3 Ultimate Wood Glue, and we'll just get this glued, get it lined up, and then we'll throw, I don't know, three, four nails in it, and then I'm gonna pre-drill just a little bit with this tiny little bit right here, and then we'll put three, four screws in it. That should be plenty. All right, we'll get this flushed up. Hopefully you can see that. The nails, well, the nails will hold this together as well, but for the most part, they are just clamps. Until I can get some screws in there.
let that box dry up a bit and then scrape the glue and that will be it for today's work and then we'll get back at this tomorrow and fit the box into the opening and we should be able to get both of these panels in here whatever it takes it might take three days because I'm going to flush trim the plywood to the box after it's installed and then I'm going to round over the edge so could take a while all right so this is what we have over there we have the window right here and we need a quarter inch reveal we're gonna have our board coming out that's basically this stuff here and then we have an area below that that's gonna get foamed so what we got to do is measure from here down to here and subtract this inch right here and cut some shims at whatever height these are and it's going to be several different heights let me see what we got here we have around two and an eighth there and exactly two there a little less than two so it goes downhill this way so we're going to find out what the biggest dimension is. Yeah, the biggest dimension's over here, and they get smaller going that way. So what I'll do is cut, I don't know, maybe six shims and start with this height and then work my way this way and just trim a little bit off of them until all of them have one inch from the top of the shim to this lip right here then when we set the box on we should have a quarter of an inch reveal all the way across then we can worry about the sides and the top the top we only got to worry about that if we got a little bit of a bow to the wood otherwise that should be in good shape right away but these sides are going to be off okay that took quite a while problem with this is that i have this one extension cord here for all of the tools i got to take it over to the chop saw to the table saw and right now to my little compressor anyways i got all of these cut and because this is just rough framing lumber it like dips down that's why all the dimensions are different so I'm going to leave these boards about a sixteenth of an inch from this face and I have this gap here for a thermal break. What I'm going to do is go along and put a couple brads in these and then test the window in here or the window box in here. And if there's any problems, I'll be able to just yank those off. These don't need to be square, but If they were off, it would bug me. All right, now this is gonna be flushed up with the face and you can see there's a bow right there, but that'll be nailed down. Good, good, good. All right, I got one nail in there and I'm going around and triple checking that everything is as good as it can be. I'll have to adjust that a little bit. This is the area that's the most messed up. So I'm going to get this bottom part nailed in, keep adjusting it until it's as good as it can, until it's good until it's as good as it can be this is all really rough carpentry so it's never going to be perfect but should look pretty good when it's done 
All right, I'll get back with you once I got this nailed the rest of the way in, and then we'll grab a sheet of plywood and start figuring that out. Once I started getting into it, I remembered that this board was twisted in the opening there. And once I remembered that, all I had to do was take the belt sander and take off any of that little stuff that was there. And now, well, and we had a little bit right here and right there. And that's because these girts go from post to post. We got a post there and eight feet away right here. And then this just goes wild. It's just hanging out there. So I connected it to these, but that was incredibly imperfect. So I just ground off right in this little area right here. And now it's dead on. So it's as good as it's gonna get. Now I just need to spritz a little bit of water in the gap and I'm gonna spray it with spray foam and then we'll have to do a little bit of trimming. I'm hoping this is that minimal expanding stuff. I wanna try to get it so that I don't get any expansion up in this gap because I'm gonna to need to fill that gap with some really flexible caulk so when this expands and contracts, it doesn't push on the window. And I'm gonna use that to pry this up to the plywood if needed. I don't think I'm gonna to need to. All right, let's get that foamed up and we'll get a sheet of plywood on the horses and start cutting the rough opening in it. You could see where I messed up with the rough framing way back when. I think it's off by, what is it? It's either a half an inch or an inch. I do that once in a while. I'll be looking at the tape measure right at what my measurement should be and I'll mark it an inch away. All right, I gotta shake this up. This stuff absolutely has to be well shook. And then I have two more cans right there. We'll see how much this takes. It's gonna take a good amount because of this mess up here, big opening. This is a can of that reusable stuff and it's been sitting around for quite some time, so it might not work. It's working. I ran out of this big can right at the very end. Now I'm gonna spritz this with water one more time. And we'll let that expand as much as it wants to and we'll get working on that plywood. Okay, if you haven't seen the previous video, I am indexing off of this chalk line up here when I put this panel in, it's gonna go right onto that line. And then the previous panel, we have an eighth of an inch gap between panels. So I'm measuring, I don't know where those are right now, but I got some nails that I'll pound in here and that's where the panel goes up to. So I put the nail in place, measure over to here and then add a quarter. I'm gonna have a quarter inch of material inside of the box all the way around and later on i'm going to use a flush trim bit and trim it flush to the box okay so i have that laid out on my panel 
this is the top, got an X there, and this is the other panel, got an X there, and this is upside down so I can cut it without splintering all over the place. So this is the opening right up to the line here. I left two struts, these are two inches wide. I left those in there so this doesn't flop around while I'm laying out the other side and putting it in. So I'm gonna cut these two openings out of here, flip this over, then I gotta lay out all of these screw locations as well as screw locations around the window. And then hopefully this stuff will be dry. It was still pretty wet. Yeah, it's very wet. Yeah, hopefully that dries. Okay, let's get these cut out. All right, we are all ready to go. And if you watched the previous video, there's three different size screws and there are three different types. It goes into treated wood at the bottom. It goes into treated wood along the side and then the rest, the field and everything else is just construction screws. And then I marked a line three quarters of an inch in from this. This hangs into the opening by a quarter inch. And then I'd like the nails to be about a half inch down. Once I trim this flush, like I said, I'm gonna round that edge over and I don't wanna hit any nails. I don't think I will. So I'm going to go and test fit this right away and make sure my shims are correct because once I put this in, I'm going to be putting glue from here all the way around to here and I don't want to be messing with it trying to get everything level and plumb and stuff while that glue is drying. Yeah, this is going to be kind of difficult. Once I get this thing in there and test fit, 
I'm going to have to stage all my stuff. I need a ladder to see that top line to make sure that I'm right on the line up there. And then I have a level to make sure my edge is plumb. <sighs> yeah, this is going to be difficult. All right, let's get this test fit and get this puppy in there. And there you have it. It looks really nice, but I'm gonna have to show you that tomorrow. This video is already getting way too long. So I will see you tomorrow in part two.